Hello again, it's the Highly OK Podcast. Uh, we've had a midweek video, if you didn't see that, check that out uh, with Shavin and Aya. We have a new guest today, which I'm really, really happy to introduce to everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for Brusk. the opportunity. Uh, Brusk is a, a software engineer, a programmer, a guitarist, he's a AUIS alumni, and he's an entrepreneur. He's the founder of Meta Solutions. Meta Solutions. Yep, and uh, we're really happy to have him. Uh, he's gonna. We're gonna go through a couple of subjects. You know, get into the gist of things, and uh, but yeah, but he just came back from uh, AUI yesterday, the our university. He was a uh, a judge right. for the Hulk Prize. Now, if any of you don't know what Hulk Prize is, Hulk Prize is an accelerated program for companies and ideas. So anyone who has an idea or a company who needs some funding, and you know, it's, it doesn't need to be groundbreaking, but you know, new ideas. Uh, they go to Hot Prize and they have a chance to win a million dollars. And what was your thoughts? How how was the uh, you know the ideas and everything? Uh, it was great. I think uh, there was a couple of good ideas out there. Um, we we started with uh, thirteen ideas in the beginning, and then uh, four made it to the second stage. And then at the end, we chose one we thought could be the best and the the the, the more lucrative than the others. Right. So I think overall it was was very good and. I'd say the only thing I didn't like about it is some uh, some of the teams did not prepare well for the statistics and data, but that could also happen. I mean, that yeah, is, yeah. So that's all key in any, any yeah. part of the market, I guess. Yeah. So uh, were you happy with the presentation of the final four? Uh, I think so, yeah. I We liked them a lot. Um, in some of them, through the presentation skills they had, hmm. they changed our minds, actually. Uh, we thought um, one project could make it to the end, but... Uh, the presentation for some other projects uh, totally shifted the game. I mean, wow! Yeah, so it was a it was a new thing to experience. Actually, yeah. yeah. So it shifted your uh, from a no to a yes. Yes, that's really powerful. Yes. Also, yes. In business, that's probably I've done sales before myself, right? Mm-hmm. And that moment when you know you've taken someone from a no to a yes right. is probably one of the best feelings you can get out there, <laughs> honestly. True. And you know, obviously, you're saying that there was people out there in our university. They're all university uh, people from our university. From AUIS, yeah. Right, mainly, right, right. Mainly. So, sorry, you've narrowed it down to just one team now. One team. Only that per- only that team from AUIS is allowed to compete in the help prize. Uh, right, that will go to the regional competition right. and they will have, um, they will be later chosen in the, on an international level. Right. And I think the winner will, as you said, will win one million dollars. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome to start yeah. any project. Basically. It really is, it really is. I mean, I've heard a bit about this prize uh, and it's not, it, the million dollars is great, mm-hmm. but the, the just the experience that these, you know, uh, students like myself mm-hmm. will be able to experience going, you know, networking with people, pitching ideas, I think is a really, really good idea. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. uh, we, some of them had a problem, I mean, later, mm-hmm. I mean, when I, when everything ended, we got down and discussed with some teams. Uh, they said that uh, we didn't have enough time. We didn't have. I mean, it was a fair competition, mm-hmm. and then the experience, at least, is very, uh, very, you know, very challenging and very good to have uh, that sort of events. Uh, and that's one thing I have discussed. If you remember at the international yeah, 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 pan- yeah. panel that we need more of those, hundred percent, hundred percent, like uh, incubators and other people and yeah. other. Other other investor, angel investors, and more people to um, to incentivize exactly. entrepreneurship exactly. in this country. Exactly. Um, I think there could be somehow. I mean, the f- I don't know why. This is my thought on this. The mm-hmm. West is mainly is really interested in making this a very uh, entrepreneurial friendly kind of market. Um, I don't know what is the political agenda, but I think there is a chance, and let's seize that. I mean, like mm-hmm. that opportunity is there. Mm-hmm. Why not? More incubators are coming here. More entrepreneurship events are happening. So I think, in a way, that that really um, makes it fair, and you know, could be very productive for the market here. Hundred yeah. percent. I mean, incentive incentivizing this sort of uh, cre- create creativity and uh, bringing people out on a stage and letting them pitch their ideas is very very good. I mean, yeah. uh, you're right. We we don't have much of that. I mean, let's forget about you know just the West for a minute, but. Even in like in the Middle East, we don't see much of that. I mean, we don't see uh, angel investments too much. We don't see uh, investors. Mm-hmm. And, you know, me, myself, I'm, I'm into the economic side of things a lot as well. But uh, there's an argument to be said that 
the reason that in the West there's so much more investment and when there is more investment and more it, it comes from the fact that there's more money there mm. right uh, and the reason that there's more money there and more money in the West I'd say is because of the fact that there's so much less tax on the people mm -hmm. there's so much so much more freer markets mm -hmm. in those areas mm -hmm. so instead of say you're a you know you're obviously your founder of meta solutions and you know hope I, I i see it growing very well one day and maybe you get to a stage where you know you're in the millions right and if you were to get hopefully yeah <laughs> not good uh, but uh, one day you know you get a corporate tax of 40 percent, for example mm -hmm. that's the sort of money that you could use to invest in uh, you know a new idea to become an angel investor right. and that's why i believe in the West, that you see a lot more of that. Would you agree with that? Yes, of yeah. course. I mean, the, the market size is yeah. one thing to consider. Mm -hmm. um, it's true in the West, it's more going, you know, going up. Entrepreneurship is more encouraged um, because of the size of market. People find themselves more in that business. Um, but there's also some downsides to that. I mean, um, I agree that taxation could be um, a problem sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I mean, in Kurdistan. The taxation system is low, very low key. I mean, we, we basically we don't have a taxation system. Uh, all that we, as a founder of the a company, that was um, like we went through all the procedures and the routines and all of that. Um, we found that um, at the end of the year, there's a very simple taxation. You submit a budget. You say at the end of the year, you made I that had, much revenue. Yeah, made that much revenue. Those were my expenses. Mm -hmm. You submit that, and the government, out of I don't know what kind of standards they have, mm -hmm. they either rejected or accepted. If they rejected, they will just write some check. Will will not accept this. Will add a couple of hundred dollars. So at the end of officially, at the end, you pay about five hundred to six hundred dollars. That's not taxation. No, that's it's not. not. It's not. Right? It's and that's like a, Taxation slap on the chin. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Honestly, it's not. Uh, so that would be really that would be that would be really helping productivity. Mm. Um, you're not paying the government every penny you. Need, it's true. Right. It's true. I mean, consider somewhere like the, the Scandinavian countries mm. where the tax uh, the tax rate is very high. Mm. Uh, compare that to here, and um, then you will see the, the huge difference. In, 100%. Right? But this, then again, why? The question is, if we have this taxation system, which is very low-key, not really insisting, why we entrepreneurship is not not really popular in our country? I think it has to do with a couple of things. Come on. One is the political system, the governmental system in the country is really outdated. I mean, you not it's still following some forms of um, socialist... Um, Bathist o oligarchical oligarchical yeah. and um, those outdated systems that has not been updated since the 60s and the 50s <laughs> <right>? ridiculous <laughs> uh, that does not consider and does not really understand what entrepreneurship is so we don't have the you know we don't have the ground legally and in terms of legislation yeah see you, you talk about ground and you could be talking about the economical ground right mm -hmm. uh, now Although I agree that we don't have any tax, so we can't really point fingers at the taxation system. Do you think it's perhaps because the government mm -hmm. has taken over so many sectors in the economy here mm -hmm. that there's not much ground for entrepreneurs to tackle, right. if that makes sense? Right. So you look at the education, the health, mm -hmm. you look at all the projects that are being done agriculturally, uh, you know, with infrastructure. Would you say that's a problem as well? Of course it is. I mean, I... 100% agree with that that mm. the government is everywhere I mean um, if you look at the system we have mm. I'm not 100% sure if it's capitalist or socialist it's a it's sort of mixture but yeah, also mixed. the government is blamed and also responsible for everything in the country um, not only healthcare not only education but employment too I mean at the end <laughs> of the day the gov it's government's responsibility to employ you while this in the entire no world is so different, yeah, right? Yeah. No one else is. This is this is the government's responsibility. responsibility yeah. That's down to you, the skills you have, yep. and this has to be so. I mean, in every capitalist system, at least, or any uh, capitalist leaning system, right? Yeah. That, that it's about demand. It's about that your skills is good enough for a firm, a corporation, a, or a company 
so that they will employ you. It's not a favor they do you. Yeah, exactly. Right? exactly. And that's one problem. That's one huge mm-hmm. problem. And mm-hmm. at the end, the mentality is really what what I'm interested in. The mentality from the day you go to school, and we generally go public to public school, and yeah. I think now is a little bit changing with the new generations and with the new people. Uh, but uh, I used to go to a, a public school. Right. And from first grade to the six, I the back then was one to six and not one to nine. But let's say one to nine. Okay. They tell you all the time. There's a first off. It's not productive. They're not uh, helping you to be critical and not helping you to be you know thinking outside of the box. What would you say it was more of then? Uh, I'll say it was rigid um, Ma- memorization. memorization yeah. And the only thing I would, was I don't know why, but I see a lot of people coming from the public schools are really good at math. <laughs> I don't know why, yeah. but uh, that's one thing. The, but the, the rest is memorization, mm-hmm. and it's the teacher, the whole system. That's one funny thing I I, I observe. Okay. The teacher and the student are together conspiring on the system. I mean, you see, the, so the teacher tells you, okay, uh, this is how they put uh, questions in the exams. So you do that, you will get the grade. It's not how you learned. It's not how you reflected on what you have learned. Mm. It's how you play with the system. So it's, even the teacher is incentivizing learning. Exactly. Mm. I mean, they, they tell you specifically. I mean, in the 12th grade, when you get to the bachelor, you, to the university, in the mm. college. Um, the deciding year. The deciding year, yes. Yeah. Uh, that, at the point, I remember all of my teachers telling me, put this comma here and put this number here. Because every year be, they, they do that and they bring the such questions, they put such questions, and okay. the true answer is this. So memorize. This. <laughs> you see, the, you see the, 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 there's the so teacher. much wrong with that. Bruce. Yes, you know, in a funny way because it's bad that they're even talking to you during an exam. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, it wasn't during an exam, was it? Was it study time or during an exam? Uh, it was. Uh, it was study time. Okay, study time. Yeah. But it, it, the fact that they they they're telling you this is the right thing to do because. <laughs> This is what is correct on the test, but not why it's correct on the test, right? Not, not. They wouldn't give you an explanation for yes, that. Yes, that's ridiculous. And right? the, the teacher themselves mm. would not really know. I mean, mm. exactly what. Mm. I mean, um, think about um, uh, the productivity in the the public schools mm. from the first grade to the twelfth grade. Mm. You will be um, you will be ha- taking English courses, but you will not learn English. You'll be taking Arabic courses, but will not will not learn English Arabic. You will take geographical historical courses, but you cannot reflect on those. Those are materials to memorize, and that's the mentality set. So you memorize that. This is a task for you. Your task is to memorize this yeah. and memorize this and memorize this. And they tell you, and when you ask why, maybe you think, why should I? Okay. You say because you have to get employed, and you say how? I mean, the government will. I mean, that's the whole mentality set. Right, I mean, from the beginning to the end, uh, it's nothing your responsibility. Your studying, your the materials in school is the responsibility of actually the school and the teacher, not mm-hmm. your responsibility. Mm-hmm. You have to just to memorize. That's the mere responsibility you have, and the rest is that when you get to college, uh, and that's the deciding year before college, yeah. you have to get a good grade because then doctors and engineers will be will be employed by the government. Right sooner than anyone else and that mentality is set i mean uh that's why a lot of people when uh, and i was when i was a student at mm-hmm. uys a mm-hmm. lot of people were struggling with the system so the american liberal system was telling you it's your responsibility to take your courses or yeah. the kind of courses you're taking yes. people were saying so i am now responsible for what i am doing and what i am saying and what i'm thinking yes exactly that i mean that's your responsibility yeah if that's the way it should be. yeah yeah and uh, what would you say that separated you from uh, what what took you out of this restricted area of uh, thought of critical thinking what was what what was it for you that made you do that was it music was it uh, AUIS perhaps because obviously AUIS is a bit, as you said a bit more critical thinking leaning towards critical right. thinking what was what do you think was the biggest turning point for you? I would say it was um, uh, at the time when I started le- learning guitar. Um, really? Yeah, I used to have a teacher, mm-hmm. and uh, that guy was not only a teacher, a, a technical teacher, it was also telling me a lot about philosophy and how to <laughs> think and a lot of that. And I remember before that, I was not all interested in thinking outside of the box. Mm. That guy he came in into my life and. 
and this really taught me that there's things you never thought about and start, and at that time I think I was 15 so it was an early age to start thinking critically and he helped me actually going into philosophy diving more into existential questions and and those 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 problems and at, before going to college I was all interested in philosophy so I was on the right track I would say and just university and AYS in, in particular just put me again on the trails and made sure that I'm not going off rails. Uh, in AYS, I would say at AYS, uh, the technical knowledge I, I uh, grasped, let's say. You studied IT then? Yes, information technology. Yeah. Uh, was not that beneficial to me. I was more interested in the liberal arts. And I really? Think, yes. AYS is not a technical school. I mean, AYS is a liberal school and they say it. They say it publicly. This yeah. is not a technical school. So mm -hmm. if you are here to know more technically theoretically in information technology this is not the right place for you uh, this is a place where where you get to take variety of courses and learn more about life philosophy and a lot of politics and a lot of which other. is important you which can't take that awesome. away yeah yeah because yes. you say at 15 years old that you were put in a position where you were learning about philosophy yeah. now one may argue that you know that's not the best way to go about life, you know, maybe that's not going to make you a millionaire. That's not going to make you succeed in life by studying philosophy. But what philosophy teaches you, I don't know if you're with me on this, mm. is critical thinking, is thinking outside the box. And that that sort of puts you on the right path, doesn't it? Right. I mean, you know, you you obviously you're at an age where you're confined in an area of education system where everyone's thinking the same mm -hmm. and, you know, you're not really being taught anything critically. You're not really being, as you said, taught to think outside the box. Mm, yes. You start playing the guitar, which in itself, playing music, it is is an art that really frees your mind, right? right? But on top of that, you've had a life teacher right. who um, who's been telling you, you know, asking you questions that you hadn't perhaps thought before. Is that correct? Of course. Right, and that's what do you do. You think um, that's what our not public system, but our education and system mm. in general needs more of. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I mean, just look and observe at what what we have set. I mean, from day one of school at uh, the last day of school, there's nothing encouraging you to be critical. I mean, exactly that example that I told you: the teacher and the student are trying to conspire on the system. They pl try to play with the system and the system is so vulnerable so weak and not productive that the teachers and by the way this no one gets me wrong and this the teachers are doing this out of good faith yeah. they try to help the yeah. student they know yeah. they this is a system they have to go through yeah. so they help them within the you system you play the game you play the game exactly yeah, yeah. this is no one is fault uh, other than you know the the government that um, that adds this curriculum and sets up this curriculum but uh, at the end, this proven to be what? Not productive, not really good. At no, at no cost, this could be beneficial. You know, beneficial to us. And, then, and just let me, sure. let me elaborate on this one. I took courses, English courses, from day one to the, to the last day of school. Okay. And that entire 12 years was nothing compared to one semester at AYS. Serious? Yeah. Not even one. When you say courses, sorry, you mean self-taught courses or courses no, with courses like, with school? With school, with school yeah. okay. With school, I mean, in school you take those courses. This isn't sponsored by AUIS, by yes. the way. Yes, <laughs> yeah, no, no, nothing here. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a bunch of criticism to AUIS. <laughs> no, no, I mean, we're like, going to get into that yeah, in a bit, don't worry. Uh, but uh, again, that compared to, to what we have. As did, a you take a, did you take the uh, advanced uh, programs? The ADP? Advanced programming. Right, and uh, you, you're, was it more the, the professors and the teachers that were you know, making you f uh, think this way or uh, were more effective in teaching you English or was it more the curriculum? That, that, that definitely would be the curriculum. Right. Because, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's the, the, the difference is that, I mean, right. uh, the curriculum is different. Right. The system is different. H how would you say the curriculum was different? Was it in a, a different in a way where it gave you responsibility or it gave you uh, space for you to think for yourself or was it different in the way that it was just more effective in teaching you? Exactly would be effectiveness. I mean, right. uh, more effective because uh, there are things tested, methodologies tested yeah. on how to... Um, help you learn English better mm. as a native I mean compared to a native uh, and of course that too I mean let's not forget that the instructors there were native, native people right so when you hear that them yeah. That, yeah that helps a lot but again the system 
provides for you tools and methodologies um, in which it's ensured that you will learn actually it's not just something and the system is not only the curriculum in itself it's a system that you are responsible for yourself it's a culture yes. yeah cultural thing it's a culture thing which i think by the way and i want to touch on this and i think it's an important issue i think you may agree with me where that culture that's taught at AUIS, um, it sort of, a lot of the students that even graduate from AUIS, mm -hmm. even though they've spent four or five years there, right. they don't seem to grasp that anyway. Right. Like, uh, I, I, I'm in a lot of classes there at AUIS and I see it all the time that where students are still in this frame of where everything should be taught and tailored to them, where they complain all the time. They, you know, you're a university student and you're still asking for deadline extensions. You're always asking for this to be helped because, oh, I had this and that. Do you, do you agree that even when it gets to a university stage, sometimes, sometimes it's too late to, 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 to impose this sort of... Um, Critical thinking, and I keep, I keep saying it, but a cultural uh, sort of a revolution on their minds. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's too late once it gets to university, or do you think it's still, you know, uh, effective? That, that would be my observation: is that 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 when they come to school, mm -hmm. uh, they still struggle with the system because now their the mind is the mentality is totally set up and trained not to be responsible for itself. So everything you have learned, and this is not something, it's not a shame or something, just you have to reconsider how you're thinking. You have been told that everything is not your responsibility, it's the schools and the teachers' responsibility. Yeah. Now you yeah. get into a place where, where they this say is totally it's... different, yeah. right? And you have to take your courses. And in the beginning for me too, I mean, just adapting with the system. I don't know what is exactly to take your own courses that do not, do not have a curriculum which is set up and consists of eight courses because that's what happens in school. What do you mean by that, sorry? Like in the school, in the, in the primary school, in the okay. high school, okay. uh, you don't choose your own courses. Yeah, true. Right? I true. mean, like you, there's true. a curriculum of eight courses. Yeah. You take that, yeah. you take it or you leave it, yeah. basically. Yeah. When I got to UIS, they told me that this is not the case. You're mature enough. You <laughs> pick up your own courses, right? So I like the idea. It took me some time. And again, um, some one of the things I... I definitely was a disaster in my Go on. my st st during time as a student was absences i never could put up with that i mean like i always late yeah had a lot of absence I actually failed two classes because, because of, of absences, absences. <laughs> uh but there was one time there was this thing changed my mind the dean of students i had i took this course and from the beginning to the end i went to the class i think five times six times and they issued a warning to me. Uh, they said that this class uh, meets um, twice a semester, so you will um, you will allow you're allowed five absences okay. in total. Okay. So I exceeded the limit, right? I went over the limit. Okay. They sent me a warning. They said um, you have exceed you are at five. Yeah. So the next one you will be failing. Right. So I said, all right, uh, I didn't see that, to be honest. I, I, I did not see that. That email the, was collapsed into other emails. Okay, okay So the okay. instructor actually replied to my to one of the emails and sent me a warning. So there was not a new subject, new, a new email. Right, I see. Right? I see so I it was see. collapsing into each yeah, other, yeah, so yeah, I did yeah, not yeah. catch that. I see. So at the last day of class, I went to class and the professor told me, what are you doing here? I said, I am a student. Uh, she said, no, you, you failed the class. I said, wow, what happened? She said, I just passed the, you know, you exceeded the limit. And it was last day of class. Imagine like the entire semester. You feel right like, oh, I'm like, finally finished and you get this yeah. information that is so new to you. I was so disappointed with the, you know, I was like pissed off and all yeah, that. Yeah. I knew deep, deep down, I know this was totally my fault. So I went to the dean of the students, okay. tried to have an argument. We were on a very good terms with the, with right. the dean. And he, he said that, did, did we warn you at the pro proper time that mm -hmm. you were going to fail? Mm -hmm. I said, yes, but you know, uh, it was a collapsed email and she had to send it. Mm. He asked me a very brilliant question. Actually. Go on. <laughs> he said, do you know to count from one to five? Okay. I said, yes. Okay. He said, why then are you just complaining about this? You know how to count from one to five. And it was exactly that moment. I mean... Yes, this is day one. I'm not going to class, so I have four <laughs> left, right? And this is day two. Why there there should be someone counting for you? Why there should be, it should be yeah, someone yeah. others responsible? Yeah, it's true, it's true. And that moment is just you know, it's just 
it was just like awakening for me. Yeah, man. Uh, it, it, it's, it's that tough uh, lesson that you learn yeah. that really changes you. Do you right. know what I mean? And yeah, I mean, it's, it's little things like that that really change you as a person. But you yourself, I mean, even though you came through those hardships at AUIS and you know you came through those obstacles, you still managed to um, finish IT, yeah. right? And you've done something that should be more, you know, more of a regular thing, but I don't see much of it. But you finished a major yeah. in a degree of IT and you got a job, not got a job, but you started a company that's related to your major, right. which is pretty uh, hard to find nowadays. Right. But um, what made you choose IT and what made you choose IT as a career as well as just a education system? Right. So in the beginning, when I applied to university, mm-hmm. I was, um, I, I decided my family also uh, insisted that I will I take engineering. Mm-hmm. So I went there and I... As they all do. Yeah, <laughs> they <will> definitely do. <laughs> um, I didn't like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was always into IT. And before that, before university, mm-hmm. I was I was all coding and all of that. Nice. Yeah, so it's, it was not something new to yeah, me. It was yeah, yeah. just, I had a background. It was not very, uh, very elaborate and very professional background, but it was something good. To mm-hmm. start with, I loved IT. My parents did insist that I go and try and see what engineering feels like. Okay. But I didn't actually. From the the second semester, I declared information technology as mine. And they Mom, thought you were still doing engineering. Yeah. No, I actually oh, okay. told them. You told them. Yeah. <laughs> they were actually very supportive. Nice. That's um, good. That's good. So said they said, um, why? So I said, I this look. I I love this. I can't do something that I am not passionate about. I don't know anything about engineering, and I'm definitely not into that hard calculus and math and all that mm. i'm into this um, let let me try this and see so i went actually into it and um, uh, when i took the courses it was very uh, you know easy to grasp uh, not very difficult somehow some pieces were challenging some some courses were challenging but i found my true passion was when i took programming nice uh, i took programming and um, we had a very very d- difficult time actually it was one of the professors uh, but w- the professor was actually challenging us, you know, and I love challenges, and I'm always into riddles and puzzles. Who and, is this professor? You um, should I mention his name? It's uh, sure. uh, Farzad. Farzad. Okay, uh, um, I'm not too familiar uh, with I don't, him. No. I don't exactly know. His name. Farzad, okay. Farzad Sanati. Right, like right. That. Go on. And that guy was, uh, you know, was uh, was not was giving us very difficult time. Right. Uh, so um, it was challenging us in class. Uh, bringing on, on tests questions that really was deliberately designed to let you fail the class. Right, right. So I had to do more than what uh, I was l- learning in class. Mm-hmm. So I went outside, did my research, and got more into uh, programming, and that's where I found my passion. And by the end of the uh, my, my, my life at UAS as a student, yeah. by, at, by that time, I realized that I am really um, really into this, really passionate about software, mm-hmm. uh, and I knew a lot actually. I dedicated a lot of time to research and doing extracurricular activities outside of the university, and I loved it. I mean, uh, I said, why not start with this? But instead of being an employee and starting that, mm-hmm. I had this idea that I can bring software as a service mm-hmm. into the market. Yeah. So why not? I mean, let's start with that. Let me ask you why you chose to do that, though, because I think that's important. Because well, did you do it merely because you loved it? Because I don't want to, you know, I'm not the sort of person who, uh, me, myself, you may disagree with me, that encourages going into a sector or a, a field that that you merely love, but the market doesn't, right? Right. It's obvious to me, mm-hmm. and obviously to you mm-hmm. as well, that the market does, uh, there is a hole in the market for software engineering, and um, I'm not uh, in- entirely sure what you do, mm-hmm. but this sort of, uh, do you build customer relationship management sort of things as well? Yes. Right, is that uh, the biggest part of what you do? Uh, that's uh, that's uh, some part of what we do. Right, uh, right. We uh, generally create software, and mm-hmm. for now, we okay. create what you call on-premise software. So okay. uh, it's one time, we sell that product uh, based on the customizations, the, uh, the requirements, the specifications of the customer, mm-hmm. back to the customer. We do not maintain this in the long term, we do it in the short term. Uh, what, what we have now on, on a parallel to that, 
uh, is uh, software that we create for our and it's our software it's possessed by us it's, it's owned by us so it's our software is working in very specific uh, fields of the market one of them is working in this this place the exchange market we call bazaar yeah. is uh in this exchange market is, is providing software solution for the entire market there nice. there's a very good cost analysis cost revenue analysis there we made and we actually invested two months of research and okay. field, field study in the market in nice there. So we decide this is a very profitable time. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but mm-hmm. when you say market research, how was that? Just asking people things? Was interviews, surveys, right. uh, uh, questionnaires, and uh, so no, none of this online, none of this Google stuff. No, huh? okay, that's no. another problem we can get into mm-hmm. later. But yeah, you were asking um, the market questions, and because of that, you were able to tailor a software for right. them. Right. Continue. And uh, the the software we are creating now is, mm. uh, and it's now under construction. Uh, it's not a software that we will be selling once for one time fee. It's a software that we will be maintaining just like how Facebook is maintaining Facebook. Yeah. And just like how Google and Alphabet is maintaining Google uh, search. And this is the same way. And it's very, it's a win win situation, I guess. It it's, is. Right? I mean, uh, the, the market is suffering a lot from, uh, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of technical stuff out there. Uh, people created software and mm-hmm. they did not know actually a lot about what they have been creating. Uh, so that's one thing. And now in the long run, people who are using those software solutions are now getting into troubles because that the software was not designed to be scalable. That software was not designed to be extensible. Adaptive. Adaptive and yeah. to be, add more data to it. And that's in a way every happens with every software. I mean except if you're paying a lot for some software. Yeah. The solution to that would be service because now um, you're paying one time, not a one-time fee, you pay a, a, a recurring subs- a subscription fee, right, basically. Right, right, a retainer. And so so that's a good thing about what you do is, is the beauty of what you do, I think. If, uh, correct me if I'm mm-hmm. wrong. What happens is you tailor a software for, for a company right. and then uh, that's a one-time fee, as you're saying. You're right. And then after that, you maintain that software for them, mm-hmm. and uh, and then that requires a lot less, a lot less labor than it was initially for mm-hmm. creating that tailored program for them. Right. That uh, we do partly, but okay. we do the on-premise software, which is as opposed to software service, which the one that one-time fee software we do that as a means to keep the business bootstrapping of the company. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, there's a lot of demand on it. Yeah. And we say, why not? We have the, course, efficient, the, the, the we have the efficient yeah. task, task force, the sufficient ta- mm-hmm. task force to do so. So we create those softwares. We invest the money we get from that into the software service that we're doing, which okay. is in, in which is running on the, in the, will be profitable in the long run. Right. I mean, the software service in the beginning, you have zero clients. So you have to find more and more and more. So other softwares that we create, I mean, um, other softwares that we create for one-time fee, is uh, a lot of time it takes a month maybe. Uh, we get a very good payment out of that, and we reinvest that money in the software as a service that we have. Nice, right. nice, nice. So that's what we do mainly. That's really really yeah. good. Uh, Meta Solutions, right? Solutions. We'll try and uh, put a link up here so you can check that out. Okay. But you look. Uh, I think we should end it there. We've had a very long de- uh, conversation and I've really, really enjoyed having you Same on, here. Mr. Brusque. Honestly, here. it's been a pleasure. Uh, so you know, uh, it's, it's been fun. I think we've had a constructive debate. We had a constructive conversation. I'd love to have you on again once we uh, grow and you're sure, helping I'll us be grow. Honored. I'll be honored. I've, I've had a lot of fun doing this, but um, so I, I'm, I'm glad that you, know, you feel the same. So thanks again, everyone. Highly OK Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe. I know the same old script. Uh, The subscribe button's over there. Like button somewhere over there as well. Uh, Join us again. Until then, have a highly okay evening. Thank you.